Hello there and welcome to my little arty corner here on YouTube and it's a cloudy day here in South Wales today being the 20th of June so it's solstice eve which always makes me smile just a bit and we had some rain overnight but it's all evaporated which means it feels a bit humid even though if it's fairly cool out so thank you for joining me I'm so glad to have you here you hear the beep of the autofocus lock is so important and um, I hope you'll enjoy having a go at drawing along with me as you can see here I've just got a simple plain tile this is four and a half inches by four and a half inches which is about we have a look one day I'll learn about eleven and a half centimeters by eleven and a half centimeters um, so it's bigger than a zentangle tile but I prefer but it's much smaller than what I'm used to working on so I've got a pencil here and I'm just going to draw in a couple of I want to do some con sort of like a border pattern and then a pattern within that border so I want to do another square inside and I want a fair size to the square so that I can got you know enough space here with the the border here to um, put some patterns in there so that'll do and I am going to um, aura these so I'm using today I'm using Pentel point liners why because I discovered I have them and I thought I'd give them a go they are water and fade resistant the nib feels a little bit softer than um, a Sakura and the paper's also new it is from Artway and I think it's the MK2 or MK7, I'm not entirely sure, but it's really quite heavy cartridge paper. But this cartridge paper is all media paper. It's been sized, which means it's been treated with something like gum arabic to make it sturdier and able to take water-based media a bit better. It's less likely to break down. Now my lines are a bit wobbly, as you know, if I get wobbles, I just go with it and then we'll add some more wobbles where I think that's necessary. I'm going to do that. And um, just have a bit of a chill out time. I'm a bit out of sorts today. I'm not really with it and i um, not quite sure what's wrong. I think it's just one of those things where, you know, it's just one of those things. I am going to put a little border in here because I do like this this distinct differentiation between one part of the tile and another. And again, the lines are a bit on the wobbly side, but I'm fine with that. I seem to be drawing an awful lot of wobbly lines at the moment, rather than my usual very precise, very straight lines. Well, straight as you get when you're drawing them freehand I suppose. I am going to draw little lines into the corner so it looks a little bit like a, a picture frame I suppose and then I'm going to add another fine border inside that like so. Again it's all wobbly but it is what it is. So I'm hoping that the pattern I use today will be one that you may be slightly familiar with but will be a variation on what you're used to. Um, not entirely sure how I'm going to do that but first things first I am going to split this into quarters. That's roughly about the same. I don't really want to make the squares any smaller because I've got a lot. I could have done it in thirds and I'd have had slightly smaller squares. I think quarters will work nicely so what I'm going to do here I am going to draw these lines in I am going to add some weight at the, at the ends where they meet in this case as well yeah, and I'm also going to add a little bit of extra ink in these corners just a little bit like this 
So we've got that kind of almost rounded feeling going on here. I've done a very good job there, but it's okay. So my next step is I am going to draw a square within each square. So I'm going to leave quite a narrow border. Like so. And here like so. I'm a bit out of sorts to the point where I'm sat there with my sketchbook and I don't know what to draw. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make a line. I'm not happy with what I did last night. Um, and so, no, I didn't quite get this line central, but it's fine. It'll be fine. If I wanted it dead central, I'd have measured it with a ruler. But it's my best guesstimate and it'll be fine. It'll be exactly what it needs to be. So I'm going back to doing basics, I suppose, and just seeing what comes here as I fill this in. And even with wobbly lines, I know it'll work out just fine and dandy. Am I going to add colour? I don't know. I've got on hand my ink tents and the Art Nouveau Kuritaki Ganzai Tambi. There are other media easy to hand up here in my my the area of my big room upstairs. That's my my studio, my workspace. So I've got this right. It does look a bit like a window, but it's not going to remain that way for long. Now then, this is my yellow book. And this is the book I'm starting to put all kinds of patterns in. So I've started with organics and I've added some colour to these because I can. For no other reason. And then I've got plenty of these here. And I'm trying to decide. I think I might do one of these or a variation on those. So let's see how we get this. So I'm going to start from the middle here and I'm going to aim for the middle there. Now I'm going to put some pencil lines in because that will take away the stress of not getting it close enough. For me and for you, don't ever be afraid of using a pencil is all I'm gonna say. So what I'm going to do here in each of these spaces, I'm going to draw a curve like so, like so, and like so. So I'm basically fitting a, a curving inwards, you know, the sides of a diamond are curving inwards. It looks a bit like a star, a very stylized star that you sometimes see in cartoons or my more whimsical drawings, the kawaii drawings I sometimes do. It's not going to stay that way. Now with this, you can stop at any point you like. Whenever you get a pattern that you like here, you can stop at any point, no pressure from me to continue. This is a, this paper has got a tooth on it. It's actually quite nice to draw on even with that. So you can see I've missed here a little bit. So I've got a slightly imperfect circle appearing there. So what I'm going to do with the, this, I'm going to make use of this just for a moment. I'm going to aura this and see if I can sort of like take away that imperfection a little bit with these lines just to make it appear a bit more like everything's joined up and that seems to work quite nicely so so all I'm doing is I'm splitting the spaces I've got up into smaller spaces as you can see and I am going to use black here as one of my colours eventually. But for now I'm just working on this. And the idea is that whatever I do to one square, I do to all the others. I'm not going to rotate, I'm not going to uh, mirror or anything else. I'm going to have a drink for a moment. I'll just show you this. I was looking for a water bottle 
um, that I could take out with me because the one I've got is glass and it's got a silicon sleeve on it, but I'm so clumsy at the moment. I know I'll drop it and it just shatter into smithereens. So I went looking and I looked on water drop for some reason. Look at this, I don't know if you can see. It's rainbow coloured and metallic and shiny, it's metal. It's got a really big drinking spout at the top, so it's got quite a wide mouth to it, which I think is either glass or plastic. I'm not quite sure which it is, but it's been washed. It's got a drink in it. It's got water that's got some um, hydration, um, sort of like flavoured tablet things in because I haven't been drinking enough and my stomach's a bit upset. And I could put the lid on so bugs can't get in. It can go with me when I finally get to go out and about a bit. So, but the rainbow, shiny rainbow, I'm just going, oh, I had to have that. So, first place I went, I found the perfect drink for me. I'm not trying the water drop things, they have weird stuff in them. And I've been looking for um, lemon and ginger tea tea bags, herbal ones that I can just brew. Yes, I know I can buy fresh lemon. Yes, I know I can buy fresh ginger. But sometimes all you want is a bag. You can just pop in a mug with some boiling water and just let it be. But I don't like these teas that have licorice or um, weird leaves in. They've got a strange taste to me. And licorice, it shouldn't be a sort of like watery flavour. I find it unpleasant, although I do like licorice. And um, I found one that has basically just lemon, ginger, I think it's got some sort of like orange peel and, and some, there was something else and I think it might have been lemongrass or something like that. But that's it. I'm thinking, why can't these companies make it like that? I guess because it's more expensive for them. They can't make as much profit. So that's my guess. But this wasn't actually any more expensive than the others, really. So I'm just going back and I'm adding that little bit of black here. My line spilled out here, so I'm going to solve that in a moment. So I'm doing little bits of weight in the diamonds. So that was a bit of a ramble. One of the um, effects of the time of my life is I am suffering from a dry mouth. Now, whether that's just menopause or whether it is um, just me not drinking enough or whether it has anything to do with medication, because some of the medication I'm taking can cause a dry mouth. But um, I just want to make sure that I've always got something with me. And um, this seems to be a good idea. So, yeah, it's horrible. Permanent dry mouth. I've tried some of the tri dry mouth treatments and they're just horrible. They don't really make my mouth any wetter. They just make it slimy and I don't like slime. I do not like avocados because they are slimy. So this is my, f oh, I haven't done this bit. Let's do those as well. A little bit of ink at the ends of these lines just to attach them one to another. Like stained glass, that's how I think of it. I got lost along the way, didn't I, a bit. Um, so, got this going on. Now then, in the middle, I am going to divide this into diamond shapes. I'm going across them like so. Now, a simple way to embellish these would just be to um, colour the top and bottom or left and right or you know, alternate them around with black. So you've got black and white. But I'm going to do something a little bit different. Firstly, I'm going to add some ink to the centre because I want them to feel they are attached. And even though this is geometric, I do want something that's organic here. So I feel in the need for some petals. We basically have petalish shapes here, but I want to put a smaller petal in them. This is how I work on variations sometimes. Not so much these days, and I need to do it more often. I'm realizing this is that I'll sit down with a basic shape or a basic structure and then I will just, if I put this on, 
No, I haven't got the autofocus lock on, have I? There we go. And just see what happens. And sometimes you'll find something you think, nah, I'm not doing that. And then other times you'll think, that is just perfect for what I want here. And this happens to be quite perfect. Oh, I've smudged, no, I've got black ink there, it'll be fine. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put little teardrop shapes in here. So it looks like we've got a little flower in the middle. They're quite big. So I'm not taking them up right up to the top of the space because I do want an outer border with them. Because that's an opportunity to add pattern or colour or texture even. See, my mind's going, these petals really need to be gold. Luckily, my gold ink is close to hand. And yeah, the petals, different sizes, slightly different shapes. But together as a whole, they look like they belong. So we've got this going on. Now then, in these sections here, I'm going to put roughly about in the centre, I'm also going to put a petal shape here, more like a leaf shape actually. I think I could have made those first ones a little bit broader, but I'm going to work my way around here and some will be thinner than others, some will be broader. We're just going to go with whatever happens. So these will definitely be a green in colour. Again, around them, there's an opportunity for texture, pattern, colour, whatever you decide. Whether this actually exists as having been done by somebody else, I absolutely have no idea. You know, there's nothing unique, truly unique in this planet, really, in some ways. Everything's made up of lines and basic shapes, ultimately. And um, eventually, we'll all, you know, if we carry on exploring, you'll stumble on very similar things. So that is my middle section for now. If I'm going to add colour, I'm going to add more texture or patterns on top of that. So I'm leaving it as it is. Right now then, around the outside here, I am going to put just a simple border here. Again, because it just feels like it finishes everything off. If I like this, this is going to end up stuck in one of my sketchbooks. I'm going to have to start doing that far more with my smaller pieces to keep them all safe. Just forget to do it. To have a mass gluing session and hunting down the artwork. Because you don't have to work on the pages in a sketchbook. You can work on other paper and then use your sketchbook as a storage for this. Okay, I am going to put squares in the corners. So I am going to just follow these outer lines here down and across just to get a fairly consistent square shape. If they're at an angle, I am not going to worry. And then with these, I'm going to put a border on the inside like this, not a complete square, just that kind of line. Move over here. Yes. Now I've got an opportunity here for all kinds of mischief. Oh, just moved awkwardly. My back's sore today and my shoulder is. So I'm going to repeat that shape, but in the opposite corner. So eventually I'm going to end up weaving this. And I'll do that in one square so you can see what I'm going to do. So I've got the point here, I'm going to go up this way and down, 
up and I've got a nice actually let's create a nice little square there and I am going to colour that central square in black so I'm going to do that on all of them I may not get as many repeats in with each one because they're all slightly different shapes but if you don't tell somebody that I won't tell them okay I think that's just going to have to be all black okay so yeah so I think I, I was sat at my desk for a while yesterday working and I didn't use the slope I've got the writing drawing slope because that seems to help my shoulder still yeah I'm still suffering with my shoulder did the I did the damage in November and if I overdo certain things I get aches and pains and this morning I woke up with um, some of the, the muscles or the cartilage or whatever around my ribs hurting as well so I know I'd done something that wasn't quite right yesterday my lower back's fine I really need to go out for a walk soon I'm really being very lazy these days so I've got those as corners now I want to do something in between but before I do that I am going to put just another bit of a border here just to separate that section from whatever else I do here then perfect opportunity for some sparkle and then what I'm going to do in this section is I am going to try I've got the centre-ish here, so I reckon I can get three sections. Let me just move that over a bit. No, nope, that's not going to work, is it? Let's have a look. Okay, so... All right, we'll do... We'll do three in each section. That seems to be what it wants to be. So these are quite big me drawings the squares but I could reduce them perhaps perhaps not let's have a look so what I'm going to do here what size have I picked up that's the O3 pencil lines are there as a guide for me And I'm going to draw a square within each of these spaces. Now I could have done triangles, but I just think squares might be nicely in keeping. And if these are all slightly different sizes and shapes, I'm fine with that. You can see that last one was rather wonky because the lines around it were rather wonky. So I'm not aiming for for, 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 for 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 perfection. I'm just going gently around here. So I'm drawing quite slowly for me, so that I can I focus on what I'm doing. Because if I don't watch where my pen is, because my mind will flit away and I'll go and look at something else or the next square I'm going to draw instead of paying attention to where my pen is. And that's why I get the worst sort of like wobbly bits or what kind of wobbly bits. That was a deliberate one, honest. Because, you know, you can't have too many perfect ones if you're saying wobbles are good. There we go. So I've got those there so now I've got to decide what I want to do inside these and I think I'm going to make use of that diamond shape again but we're going to do something different with it because why not again it ties everything together doesn't it I think so and um As these squares are a little bit smaller, they won't be quite as ornate. My phone's pinging. Oh, happy days. 
the habit of doing that. There's probably emails clicking in. Or a notification from something or someone. No, it won't be a notification from someone because it makes a different sound, so it's email. There we go. Remember being absolutely amazed in the times of the earliest sort of like smartphones where you could download different ringtones and um, Harry Potter was mine or Star Wars or um, Star Trek Next Generation and various other things and it was quite fun to change them from time to time although it would confuse me because I wouldn't recognise my own ringtone if I just changed it. Okie doke, so I've got these so what should we do here? Again, I'm going to cross them in the middle. I could have split them from top to bottom, but I'm not. I'm going to do the same thing. But I'm not doing a, I'm not going to do a smaller version of the same pattern. I can tell you that much. There will be some similarity, obviously, because I'm using the same structure here, the same skeleton, which is this square with that kind of diamond shape in it. And I am putting these little shapes in. Done those all. Now then, I'm going to colour the top and the bottom in black. This may take me a wee while, but bear with me, because I do want to show what I'll do as I go around the corner, you may guess. Like so, and like so. If I change the shape of these a little bit or the size of them as I go, I'm not going to worry because it's all black. Then here, if I carried this, I'd, you know, kept my paper the same. These and these would be in black, but I'm not. I'm going to have the ones that point the inside and outside done in black. So they rotate around the corner. This reminds me a lot of um, tile flooring and um, particularly medieval tiled flooring. So these, you get similar patterns to this, but I'm sure that's the same with tiles the world over. My head is going to medieval tile, tile flooring. I went to Worcester Cathedral a few years ago, with my friend Liz. Is it Worcester? Yeah, it was. And they had... It was definitely Worcester. I haven't been to Gloucester with her yet. Um, I've been to Gloucester Cathedral, it's wonderful. Um, as is Worcester Cathedral, but they have um, a display of medieval tiles found. Was that Tewkesbury Abbey? No, it's Tewkesbury. And that's quite, that's even longer ago. And they've got a display there of medieval tiles that were found during building works and whatever. And it's really, really fascinating to see all the different patterns that they'd used and the different sizes of tiles from different periods. A lot of them were a lot smaller than floor tiles we have today. And very simple because they didn't have the range of coloured glazes in many ways that we have. And the designs were sort of stamped into them and filled with coloured slip in many cases, you know, lighter coloured slip. It's just fascinating. I'm sure I've got a photograph of it on my computer somewhere. I should have a look for some inspiration. But um, always look down when you go into old places because you never know what you will see. Churches, it's going to be tiles and possibly gravestones. At one time, the great and the good were buried inside a church, as they still are today. Um, and you have a flat headstone over them marking where they're buried, who's underneath there. 
and the closer you are to the altar, the more exalted you are. Sounds like it relates to altar, doesn't it? Exalted. I don't think it is, though. And it was a prime place because, you know, the closer to the altar, the closer to God you are. And then because churches and things became overflowing with the dead, they then started to bury people outside the church, but the exalted place was as close to the church wall as you could get, if I remember correctly. I may be making this up, mind you, but I must have read it somewhere or absorbed it or it makes sense to me or had it in a conversation with my archaeologist friend. But um, so it just makes sense. There we go. So, same skeleton, completely different looking. But I do want to add something on the outside of these just to make them a little bit more ornate and to tie them back in. Again, completely optional. The choice is entirely yours. These little black bits are great, actually, because I can draw through them instead of stopping. I'm glad I filled them in first. I find sometimes you have to do some work before you can decide exactly what it is that you want to do. So just those that little box around it now starts to bring it back a little. No, it doesn't actually. It doesn't detract from the loveliness of this one little bit, does it? Just an opportunity for colour or to say some texture. We shall see what happens now in a moment. Because this'll be me just about finished with this O3 pen, so the next time I use a pen it will be the O1. But not for a little while, because I do want to start adding some colour. Now the chances are I'm not going to add colour to everything. So half an hour so far. Perhaps I'll just pick some sections out and we'll have a look at adding colour to one of them and seeing what happens. I could just shade, but as you may know, I'm not a fan of shading with graphite. I much prefer to use colour. So we're nearly done. Just one more set of four. My hands are ever so warm here. It is really sticky. As in humid. There we go. So that is my tile so far. I don't know what you think of it, but I rather like it. Just wipe my hands a moment and get rid of the sweat. I don't know why I'm so hot. Time for another drink. Excuse me. The, um, the bottle is a pint in size, 20, 20 British fluid ounces, about 600 millilitres, so brilliant, so it's, it's nice and large, so it's keep me going for a while. Okie dokes. I think Kuritaki Gansai Tambi will be my best option here. I have got some water, I have got some tissue there. Got these, I shall put my yellow book out of the way. I didn't actually refer to that much just to get the inspiration for the shapes I wanted to draw. Take the lid off. Oop, come on, I can do that. I can. But before I start adding colour, I'm just going to erase my pencil lines. Yes, I know. But this looks like Zentangle, but I break the rules all the time. As far as I'm concerned, you work in pencil so you can erase it. As an artist, I do that all the time. So you have my permission to use an eraser. And also, graphite, pencil graphite, can be picked up by the, um, by the paints. Okay, I need a brush. That one will do. It's a zero De La Rowney Aquafine. It's got a synthetic hair to it. It's quite springy. And I prefer a springy brush rather than a soft brush. So in the middle here, I want to add some green to the leaves. So I'm going to use, no, I want to add some green to the leaves. That's right, Angela. So I'm going to use 
this pea green, but I'm going to come back and add, do four at once, which is lovely. I just love these paints, they're just fabulous. Ooh, that's just basically water, that's no good. This paper, I haven't used it before. Um, so I'm not entirely sure how well it will work. Because it's sized, it should be fine with watercolour. Sometimes it looks a little bit like it's pilling, but once it's dry, there's no pilling. So I don't know what that's about. Pilling is where the, the paper starts to degrade and you get little bits there. But I think it might just be the... The paper just... Um, sticking out the texture on the paper because it, it disappears and it's perfectly smooth afterwards so I don't know what that's about but it works but it's fine it works for me because I'm not a big watercolorist I tend to use watercolors a bit like colored pencils sorry did I go off screen there I think it might need a bit more light so let's pop the light on so I'm going to go back to using this so I'm going to color the leaves with this lovely light yellowy green first if I go over the pen lines, I'm not going to fret. I'm going to try and keep it to a minimum. And then, but I can then go back and go over them in pen. But I'm not really putting an awful lot of colour down, to be honest. Put some water on top of the colours I'm using. So again, I'm just putting some of the darker colour at the base. And then I'll go back with a, a clean brush. I do want a bit more colour there, and I think I might need a little bit more of the yellowy colour, yellowy green. Or not, because I think if I fuss around with things too much, I end up making a mess of them, which is why I tend to colour very simply. So that's beginning to look quite nice, so I'll just do the others while I'm at it. because it's not taking me that long to do. And to keep this all nice and co you know, cohesive, sort of like, so these look like they belong, I must probably use the same colours for some of the elements in the outer border or other parts here. So that looks, you can see when I've done one in just one colour, you can see the little difference that it makes just by adding a tiny touch of the Darker colour, of course that's not a tiny touch, but you know. We're talking here, I'm doing the blend <laughs> the colouring, so sometimes it's not gonna work out exactly the same in each one, but it will be fine. It is what it is and you know. Let's go and get a little bit of a lighter yellow in these ones and just add that back in. That'll be fine. So this variation is fine. Hand created, we'll go with it. Oh gosh, that's rather dry. Water, colour means you use water with it. It doesn't have to be so much so watery that when it dries there's no colour visible. Watercolour always dries lighter than you, the colour you see when it's wet. That's fine as well. I'm not quite sure how lighter these become as they dry, mind you, but I like, like how they appear. So there we are, we've got some lovely bright greens and yellowy greens there. That one is very pale with that yellowy green, so I'm just going to go back and just get a little bit more of it. And just that's an awful lot. It's all right. It'll be fine, I'll just pick it up. Add little bits here and there where you can see there's a bit of a patchiness. It's like all other watercolours, these reactivate with water, so I can just go back with a damp brush and just move them to fill the little gaps and things up. That's a really bad one, that one. Well, you out just to fill those little spaces in around the edge. Fabulous. 
so they look really nice. These um, petals in the middle, I am going to make use of the lovely pinky red that's in here. I'm going to put it in at the base to begin with. So I'm just going to do one of these. We'll have a dark colour at the base. It's my pet my paintbrush off. Sorry for the if you, the tinkling of annoys you. Sorry. And then I want to use a lighter pink for the tips. So I'm just going to come back with that. Have that lighter pink in. Need to touch more of it. Basically, just have water there and there. And then I'm just going to use my brush just to get them to blend where they meet. So smooth that harsh edge out just a little bit and when I add some metallic paint to these I'm going to put gold in the in the center and if I don't put it anywhere else there we are actually looks quite cool I'm quite impressed with that for me that's pretty good going let me tell you because I'm not very good with watercolors or with color but this may the, these paints may be my forte with it. I will do one next door. And I'm just picking up some of the lighter pink. Now this, this darker pink has stayed wetter for longer so it's going to be easier to blend. I am really fussy when it comes to my watercolour palettes as I don't like having mucky paint pans. So I'm forever cleaning my paints, my brushes up. Terrible. And when I see other people having mucky paint pans in their watercolour sets, if I'm watching a video where somebody's doing that, you can be more going, no, I want to clean that up. It's weird. I don't know why. Okay. So that's looking quite good. I don't know what colour to do around the outside. I am so tempted to do, actually either the very light green or do I want to do rust or the yellowy colour? I think I want to do rust but I think or the yellowy, the green gold actually the green do I want to put another pink there? Do I want to put another pink there or purple? I do think though that I may use that yellow gold because it's just so, such a lovely colour Oh yeah, that's nice. Yep. Nice choice, Angela. So I'll finish this one square off. Hopefully within an hour. Because I know that not everybody likes long videos, but you have got the option to pause and to come back and watch the rest of it at another time. You don't have to watch it all in one sitting. Um, but I find I find it irritating that if I watch something that's in series and then I can't find the next one easily, I often won't go back and watch the next one. So it's you've got the option here. I know people do put links in the you know description, and I am aware of the um, history list. But sometimes I'm watching so many videos because I often put them on while I'm working, just listening to things, podcasts, and so on. So that actually has worked really nicely. Around these leaves, I do think I'd like some blue, as if it's sky. Now I've got this lovely, lovely blue here, but I think that will be too. I'll show you. I think this blue will be too light. It's too similar in saturation to the leaves. I want something that's much darker. Now this is this one here. Turn it around the right way, my lid. It's actually, that's shadow green. It's got greyish blue. That might work actually. Let's go for the shadow blue. Oh, 
hack work I think I need to um, intensify that blue on this side just a little bit more but I think that'll work I've not picked up any more pigment right still a bit yummy in terms of water okay it's what it is so we'll just work around and I'm just going to do this a flat colour because I do intend to come back with a pen of some kind to add some interest to it part of me is thinking white would be fun because it would really lighten it up you get those darker patches in the underneath but what me thinks yeah I'll leave as it is see how I feel in a bit you know when it's all done the whole tile is finished so we've got that really should use a palette to put the paints into so I've got a source of them there ready and all the same kind of wetness although I think today that's pretty moot though it's humid enough there's not going to be a quick evaporation of things so that actually looks yeah it looks quite nice okay it's now time for some gold where's my gold ink over there come on yeah okay it's the calligraphy ink again because I'm finding this is the easiest for me to use at the moment and it's such a lovely warm gold as well you can see the colour in here it's lovely so stamp brush pick some of the ink up it needs a good shake I'm going to put that little dot of gold in the middle slightly bigger dot and then I'm going to Use gold here. So it looks like we've got, you know, golden, it's almost like window panes, I guess, more than tiles, but perhaps they're very opulent tiles. But who knows? I know I love the coup. Oh, Aku is amazing pottery. It's a Japanese technique, I believe. And you use glazes that have got a lot of copper in. And then the um, pottery, the glaze, is fired in what's called a reducing atmosphere. And reducing atmosphere means there's very little oxygen there. And what this produces then is loads of copper oxides that are the most amazing colours. Um, and it's sort of like rainbow iridescence almost. Maybe not all the colour of the rainbows. You never quite know what you're going to get. But they are they have this beautiful, well, it depends how, how everything is applied and the type of clay you use and glaze and so on. But the ones I love are the glazes have got this beautifully, beautifully velvety texture to them almost. And they just look so soft yet shiny at the same time. It's just so beautiful. And um, I understand you can make a clay pit in your back garden from an old metal dustbin and so on. And I've been tempted, but I'm thinking, no, me and fire, not the best thing to put together because I am clumsy. Boy, have I got clumsier lately. Apparently, that is one of the signs of, one of the symptoms of perimenopause, perimenopause is having an increase in clumsiness. So that explains that one then. So I've got these here and what I'm also going to do while I've got the gold out is I'm just going to put a little dot of gold at the base of each petal, just a tiny dot and I'm also going to put some tiny dots at the leaves so it looks like I'm not going to be adding any more black to these, who oh, no. So that is this one done, and if I move it, hopefully. Sorry if I was off screen then, I hope I wasn't. Down here somewhere, uh, possibly. But you can see, if I can get this to catch the light in a pleasant way. You can see where some of the gold is at least, so. 
that's really nice. Okay. So the other tiles here, I'm going to do in the same colours because I'll remember what these are. So, you know, I've got the reference here for all of that. Around the outside, I'm going to use similar colours. In the light areas, let me just put some of this water in here so I've got some paint to pick up. I'm actually going to fill these with the green gold. So I'm going to do one. And I'm going to use the same colours in different places. So the green, you know, in different places. I'm going to use the same colours I've chosen in each section, even though I'll use them in different ways. Oh, that's going to need a bit of black to clean up. I'm rushing, aren't I? a bit more colour in it because it's quite insipid that one. This one could have some colour taken away from it because it's quite intense. But I'm happy with the variations we're getting in colour anyway so that's fine. And if there is any spillage of the colour onto the black and it sort of um, affects the look of the black I'm going to be fine about that. So that's quite nice. Now then I want to bring that pink in and I think what I'm going to do is I may use the pink in these little sections and I'll use that slate blue well not slate blue, the storm blue was it? cloud blue? something like that that um, grey blue, almost like a denim colour isn't it? not around this part because I think I'll do around this in gold. Now I've got some of this pink bleeding into that yellow green but I'm fine with that for now because I can always fix it later. I'm not going to do this, I'm going to use gold there. I'm going to use this blue colour. On the gaps between these because this is the darkest colour I'm using. Although I think this one's going to end up fairly pale and insipid. But again, I'm not worried if there's variation in the colours, that somewhere it's lighter and darker, because that adds interest in my mind. I'm not trying to be perfect here. I'm trying to be interesting, possibly. Now, this is quite... This looks like it's going to be darker when it dries. It may not be. So when they're wet, they always look darker because the water helps to reflect light. When they sink into the paper, they, you know, as they dry, there's, there's not so much ability for the paper to reflect light like water does. Which is why glass, seeing drawings under glass always makes them look a lot brighter. A little bit more of that blue just to finish this off. So I will just add a bit more here. Just to darken this side up. I've gone outside there a bit, but I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to add gold around the outside as well. I'm going to be doing a lot of gold here. You can tell, can't you? I'm getting excited about gold. And yeah, it's not a metal I choose to wear. I'm not fussed on it. I've got glasses with gold frames and rose gold frames, but that's and some hair rips. Or you know, things you put your hair up and they grip them claw grips. I've got some of those that are gold and rose gold as well as silver but my metal of choice if I wear jewellery is silver. Always has been. I don't think I've actually got any gold jewellery at all. I'm most positive I don't. My old sister did buy me a gold ring when I was for my 13th birthday. It was very fine, very thin and it had um, sort of edges that have been hammered flat so they had sort of like an oval shape and I'd never had a piece of jewellery before and she bought me a jewellery box to keep it in and she also bought me my first ever Rotring um, technical drawing pen which I can't think of the name of them uh, da, 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 da. Rapidograph 
and um, which I learned. You've wondered why I hold my pens almost vertical. It's because of the, the Rotring Rapidograph, because she explained to me how you have to hold them so you don't wear the nibs down. And I used to write all my notes and lessons in school with this thing and hold it upright. So it's a habit I form then, or, you know, how I hold my pens, and I still do now. So that looks rather cool. So just for this one, I'm going to add some gold. Yep, 55 minutes the video is, so we're getting close to an hour. So again, just in the, this little section here, so it's adding that little bit of opulence again, a bit of shininess. Reminds me then of medieval manuscript, illuminated manuscripts, where a lot of gold was used. Obviously not like this, they used proper gold leaf and um, sizing the glue they used to adhere it to the vellum, which is animal skin. It's gross. But, you know, nowadays we've got the ability to make paper from other materials that serves well. But there are people who still do the manuscripts in that traditional way. Not an option for me, I'm vegetarian and that's it. I don't think I've got any animal hair brushes in my collection because it goes against the grain for me. So that bit of gold there really does help. It just lifts that, that little bit. Now let me just put the lid on the gold. Because before I go, I'm hoping these will be dry. They are. Since that, I've got this O1 here. Now I'm suspecting that this might feather outwards. But this little sec, this blue section behind, I'm going to fill with like little pebbles for texture. And this extra black ink here darkens the colour and sends it firmly to the background so it's not competing with the pink and that lovely yellowy gold. So I say pebbly shapes, they're sort of like rounded, squashed orbs, I suppose. But rather than being spherical, they are sort of like squashed in to fill the space. So it does look a little bit like a pebble street. And I may actually, once I finish this, go back and add some specks of gold on these as if they've, they've had some gold splashed on them. And I quite like that. I could have just used straight lines in some way or cross hatching or um, something like, you know, a, a print amp or any of the other kinds of simple filler patterns that we know of or textural patterns cross hatching but i just think this will just finish this really rather nicely now i'm going to finish this off just there this bit because i know what i'm doing now i'm going to go back to this but i'm going to turn it upside down because i think that gold there will be just a little bit on the dry side on the wet side so this little bit here I'm going to fill this in the same kind of way. And again, it sends that blue to the background, further back because it darkens it, and helps to bring these patterns out. And this would be the time where I have a check round and see if I need to adjust any lines or clean up any lines as well. I'm never, go I'm never going to get perfect. I've got some gold spill over there, so I'll go over that. I'm never going to be able to fill these tiny sections in perfectly. I haven't got the skills for that. Um, but Eventually, all just works and comes together, I think. And you can see the difference that makes compared to the one that's just 
the plain colour and that was the darkest blue section as well. So this uh, this increases that contrast and just shoves this background back to where it belongs, the background. Which means that these lovely simple patterns are very valuable. And I've made the decision that I'm going to use the same kinds of filler patterns in all parts of this design. So this is what's happening at the moment. I think I'm going to put some black dots in these sections on top of the colour. And that gives me the opportunity as well while I'm here just to go around and I haven't done too bad actually. Through the middle of these, like so. And then on the black ones I'm going to use gold because again that will pick up that gold. So I've got my gold ink again, just giving it a bit of a shake. Nice fine brush. Add some water to the stuff in the lid so it's a bit runnier. Scrape it off on the side of my bottle and then hopefully I'll be able to get some tiny little gold dots on here. Yes I could use a gel pen but that gold would look quite different to this gold and so it just helps to bring it back and I've got that gold green. It's nice to have the gold in the black and the black on the green gold so it just helps to bring that in just rinse my brush off I don't want that to harden on there it should wash off because it is water soluble the calligraphy inks aren't permanent but that is this as far as we get we're getting it's a good start so the only thing I haven't done is the corners oh, let's have a think because in the corners I want a dark colour at the base, so I want it to appear that they're going inwards, not sticking upwards. If I wanted them to stick upwards, have a quick look. What I am going to do, I'm going to put a little block of gold on top of that black, which could be a recipe for disaster, like so. Because that could be higher or lower, depending on how we add colour. But let's have a look. Do you know, I'm not sure what I want to do there. I am tempted to use this blue and start very light and make it increasingly dark down to the centre on one side. And perhaps using the green or the pink on the other. But I'm not entirely sure at the moment what I want to do there. That'll have to be a surprise. I think I want to finish everything else before I decide on that. And it may be that I decide that the blue, maybe, yeah, the blue might be best because I am going to put gold in these sections, aren't I? Let's say that. I was going to. So we're going to put gold here. Keeping the black on show as much as I can again. I can see here where I've added gold here, I need to go black, back round with a black pen. It's not a problem. As long as I don't do it to every line, there's more of a chance of me really mucking things up. And I'm so tempted to go here and around here with gold, but perhaps not here and here, but definitely, definitely want to add gold in this section. Because then it keeps my tiles, little square tiles in the centre together, as if they belong together. Just Finish that off to this corner, it will give you an idea. Obviously if you don't have gold, you don't have watercolours, you don't like adding colour, just do your own thing. 
Seriously, just do it. It'll be fab because it will be yours. And as I've said, you can stop at any point you like with the adding the parts of the pattern. This mine did get pretty ornate. It's not as ornate as I could get, trust me. I mean, I've got a lot of space to work with here. I've left quite a lot of open space there, which is uncharacteristic of me. But I quite like it as it is. So I can see where I'm going to add gold now. Um, it's these corners that's my my issue and this outside part and this part here. Tempting to do gold again, but I don't think I will. Um, I may use the green gold actually. So I think the green gold would look nice next to the gold. Let's try that. So there's me saying I'm going to finish. Yeah, right, she says. <laughs> okay. Oops, as I'm making the right pig's ear of it. Okay, again, it's not an issue because if I go over the black lines, I can always clean it up. If I go over the gold, I can just paint over the gold when it's dry. It's not a problem. Nothing is ever a problem. You can see that if I put more of this here. I'm keeping it dark at the ends and blending it out lighter in the middle. That's the plan anyway. Just need a little bit more colour at the oops, wrong colour. A bit more colour here, just to darken this edge up, this end. And perhaps a little bit more there just to blend that out. And we've got that going on. So yeah, so I think that'll work. And then round these, I may, because I've got that yellow green there, I may do the same around this, because that then would make it feel nice. But I could pick up the pink, actually. That deep pink would be quite nice around these. So let's have a look at that. Okay, let's see. Will that work? I think it will. Yeah, it's going to go round the um, each of the tiles. So if I take this one and just blend it out. This one here, blend it out. And it's a bit more dark pink in the corners. You can see with the wet, these, these sort of blossom out on this paper just a bit, which is great. So that will look really nice, actually. I like that. We just try it on the square above, which is, has got that blue background. I just need a bit more of this, I think. Those dark corners really will help it to... Oops, that was a real mucky mess there. But I know I can fix it. In fact, it'll be fixed, if nothing else, because we're using gold on the edge, aren't we? Around it, so that'll be fine. So we're getting there. It does re-wet on this paper for you. A bit harder, but you know, it's, as long as I catch it before it's totally dry, I think it'll be fine. I said it's not watercolour paper, but... So yeah, that'll work quite nicely. I think so. I don't know what you think.
may not be your colour choices, but may not normally be mine, but I'm winging it, ish, me ish. Just using this palette and the colours I like together, I suppose, for now. There we go. There's quite a lot of colour there, so I'll just spread it up and just leave it to dry. So you can see that this is going to work out quite nicely. Again, I'll just tilt this so you can see the gold. There we go. So that looks quite opulent. And there's more gold to come. And so I'll say thank you so much for sharing some time with me today. And um, I hope you give this design a go if you do. And you do any variations, I'd love to see what you do if you post it on social media. Just tag me in it. And I will always see. It might take me a wee while because when I'm in moods like this, I don't do a lot with social media because it can really drag me down. So um, just bear with me on that one as well. OK, so look after yourselves. Find time to be creative and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye for now. Ta-ra. Bye all.